In this presentation, I will show you the six basic steps you have to follow in order to create the Caramba statical model. This workflow is a base for the formation of any structural problem you would like to simulate with Caramba. So firstly, you need to provide the wire frame geometry that is converted to the element that Caramba understands as a structural element. Secondly, you need to define the supports. Then, when the elements and supports are defined, you have to indicate the points where the structure receives the loads. And this is the third point. When these three points are fulfilled, you could already assemble the model. The cross sections and materials are optional. The assemble model puts all these elements together into statical model and this is model ready for Caramba to be calculated. In the fifth step, using one of the algorithms provided by Caramba, you could calculate the reaction of the statical model to the applied loads and to the predefined boundary conditions you defined previously. After calculation, you could see the results. There are three components to see the results, model view, beam view and shell view. Let's have now a closer look to each of these steps to understand better how to define the basic Caramba definition. So, in order to create geometry, you have to specify lines or meshes. In the first step, you need to convert the provided wireframe geometry into Caramba elements. Lines are going to be converted with light to beam component into beams, and meshes with mesh to shell component into shells. If you give the name to the element, it allows assigning non-default cross-sections and materials. In the second step, you have to define the supports. In order to define them, you need to provide points or indexes of the points of the wireframe geometry you used. It works very similar to the kangaroo, so these points have to belong to the wireframe geometry. It means they have to be the ends of the line or the vertices of the mesh you're providing. Optionally, you could specify the plane to change the locally oriented support conditions. It means that your support is not going to be attached to the flat surface, but maybe to other surface or vertical or some other plane, and you could specify it here. Then you need to define the degrees of freedoms in the submenu, this is called conditions. If the button is activated, it's black. And it means that it's either zero translation on the specific axe or there is zero rotation on the corresponding global axe. So if the circle is black under T like translation or R like rotation, it means that the movement, this translation or rotation, is blocked. Okay? So black means blocked and white means open. As a result, we have fully defined support that is going to be as a plugin to the assemble component. The first step is defining of the loads. So basically we have just one default component called loads, but then in this black sub menu called type of load, you could define what kind of load you could actually would like to use. Starting from the left, gravity load acts on the whole structure. The point load acts only on the points and you need again to specify them by giving the points or index of the point. If you choose in the type of the load uniform lime, this specifies the beam load. And you could assign this load by giving the name of the element, giving the name of the beam, in this case it's B. You could also assign mesh loads that act on the meshes and then you have to provide a mesh as an input to this component and this load is reduced inside the component actually to the beam loads and point loads that are of course equivalent to this mesh load. In all these versions you have to provide a vector that specifies the direction of the load. This vector is always orientated to the global coordinate system but this could be changed in a beam and mesh load by choosing specific orientation in this black submenu panel called orientation. Then you could also assign materials. Assigning material is optional, 
and if we don't assign any material, the still is assigned as default. However, if you want to define your own material, you could do this in two ways. The first one is just select the material from the table that is provided when Caramba is installed. You could select the elements to which are going to assign material again by providing the name of them. The second option for assigning the material is using the material properties. Here you have to specify the physical properties of material to create actually the material you want to use in your Caramba model. Assigning cross-sections is also optional. If you decide to give a specific cross-section to your model, you could do this in several ways. First of all, you could use cross-section component and it works similar as the loads component. It means you could choose the specific type of cross-section by choosing it from this black submenu and then there are several types available like circular hollow section or field trapezoid or others. You are attaching the cross-sections by giving the name of the element and once you decide on which cross-section you're going to use, the inputs are changed in the component and you could specify the different parameters like width or thickness or height of the cross-section. If you choose the shell cross-section, only the height is the variable. You could also choose the different cross-sections from using the cross-section selector and using the predefined cross-section in the Carambas library. Then, when you have already defined the elements, loads and supports and cross-sections optionally and materials optionally, you could assemble them into integrated statical Caramba model. This assemble component not only calculates the mass, but also outputs the center of gravity of the whole structure. If elements get rigidly connected, if they are attached to the same nodes, as the output we have the model that is ready to be calculated. And this calculation could be done with the algorithm provided into Caramba's components panel. The first basic one is the analyze and it calculates the deflection of the model using the first order theory. But it's not the only one. The numerical evaluation options comprise second order theory, natural vibrations, large deflections, evolutionary structural optimization and some others. Also, they include dedicated optimization algorithms, for example, like cross-section optimization. Once you assemble the model and you calculated it, you could see the results. Basically, there are three components for visualizing the model. Model view, beam view and shell view. Model view sets the basic properties for visualization, like a sizing of the symbols and the scale of the deflection you see. Beam view indicates specific view of the beam. You could see the utilization or the cross section. The same with the shell. And you could define what kind of projection you have, selecting specific points in the submenus. And we are going to do this now on the live example of the static beam. See you in the next lesson.